Okay, now before we move on from the neutral plane discussion, I want to show one more situation in which you can use the neutral plane draft. Let's start up the draft feature again. Make sure it's on neutral plane. Set it to one degree angle. And I'm going to select the bottom of the cutout again as the neutral plane. But the faces to draft this time, I'm going to select all four of these outer faces of the part. Now remember, these originally had a three degree draft on them. Let's see what happens when I use a neutral plane that is not on either end of the faces, but it's kind of in the middle. If you were watching closely, you saw the faces actually pivot around the neutral plane. So the bottom got smaller, and the top face got somewhat larger. Let's roll this back and make sure that that really was the case. If we select this edge, this measures as 2.289. Selecting the bottom edge is 2.563. We apply the draft. The bottom edge gets smaller at 2.458 and the top edge gets larger at 2.366. So you can use neutral plane draft where the neutral plane is not on either end of the faces to be drafted. It just means that the neutral plane will be somewhere in the middle and the faces will pivot about that line. From here, we'll move on to more complex types of draft. And we're going to use a new part to do that. Just another rectangular part. The dimensions on this really don't matter. If you're following along, just make a part that's relatively these proportions. Now what I'm going to do is create a parting line on here that's not really a line. This happens frequently where you have a nonlinear parting line. And in some cases that we'll take a look at later, a stepped parting line. On one face, I'm going to draw an arc. And this arc is just going to go from one side to the other and look like this. From here, I'm going to use, under the curves option, the split line command. Make sure you're using the projection type of split and that it's using the current sketch. On the faces to split, select all of the faces around the model except for the top and the bottom. When you click the green check, you'll notice that you get a split line that goes all the way around the part. On the two ends, it's going to be a straight line, and on the two other faces, it's going to be an arc. Now let's create draft. The type of draft, change it to parting line. Change the draft angle to five degrees. We want to exaggerate it a little bit so we can see it. The direction of pull, I'm just going to select the top of the model to make it go straight up. And the parting lines, I'm going to select these four edges that we just created with the split line. Notice now that we've got another set of arrows. These yellow arrows indicate which face is being drafted. For example, every edge separates two faces. There's the face on top and the face on the bottom. The yellow arrow indicates which face we're talking about, the one on top or the one on the bottom. You can switch the arrow by selecting the edge in the parting lines list and clicking the other face option. SolidWorks generally gets this right, but sometimes it gets it wrong. And sometimes the graphics need refreshing, so you might just need to jiggle the view a little bit to make it update properly. Okay, so now we're going to create draft in some cases from a straight parting line, but in two cases from a curved parting line. Let's see what this does. The first thing that you'll notice is that from the top view, these edges are not straight. The edges created by the draft that comes from the straight parting line are straight but the edges created by the face drafted by the curved parting line are not straight. Another thing that you will notice is that if you try to sketch on this face, that face is not flat. So selecting it, the sketch icon is grayed out. If I select this one, drafted from a straight line, 
I can sketch on it, so that means it's a flat face. So again, this type of draft is called parting line draft, and it can be used from either straight lines, angled lines, or curved lines. SolidWorks will not allow you to draft faces on both sides of a parting line at the same time. So if you want to get draft on the top and the bottom, you have to create two separate draft features. So let's create the second draft feature. Again, parting line, five degrees. Direction of pull. I'll select on this top face, but I'm going to change the direction of pull because below the parting line, the direction of pull is going to go the other way. So I'll go around and select all of the parting lines. Notice that the yellow arrows are pointing down now because the direction of pull has been reversed. And so these faces on the bottom that have not been drafted before will now be drafted. Click the green check to see what happens. And again, we get the same result. If we look at this with the draft analysis turned on, establish the direction of pull, one degree as our delineator between drafted and not drafted. Notice that SolidWorks can find the parting line for the part pretty easily. The red faces indicate faces that are created by a piece of steel that will pull straight down. The green faces indicate faces of the plastic part that will be created by steel that pulls straight up. So SolidWorks draft analysis really helps you keep track of if your plastic part has the correct draft on it or not. You still need to have a little bit of ability to visualize the mold for manufacturing purposes. But these tools in SolidWorks help the visualization quite a bit.